Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So today I wanted to talk about filming behind the scenes on our videos. And it's the thick of pollen season around here, so I apologize if I sound congested and I'm hoping I can make it through without sneezing too many times <laughs> during this video. But I did want to uh, create a video about this, kind of piggybacking on my last video uh, with Brad Deal when he was here and talking about how the filming and sharing the behind the scenes clips from his photo shoots along with the ending results, just kind of how that catapulted him to where he is now. And I feel like it's important on a couple different fronts. Uh, one for potential clients that might be watching your content, uh, you know, to see the end results, but then also they kind of get a peek uh, into your photo shoots, into the energy you bring to these photo shoots so they can maybe get a sense of who you are before they might reach out uh, about a pending project. And that is a huge part of being hired on commercial jobs. Uh, it's just the fact that a lot of people want to hire uh, other artists, photographers, people just in general that they can get along with and enjoy the process with. Uh, and there's just a lot of problem solving that goes on during those shoots. So it's nice to be paired with someone that you naturally get along with. So I feel like that's an important part of you know, showing, demonstrating that in these behind the scene clips. Another group I feel uh, it's important to show this type of stuff to would be just kind of the, the general photographic community. And that would include probably some end user clients, other photographers, uh, manufacturers of, of products and that type of thing. And I feel like as you grow a following there, you will open up doors for opportunities you wouldn't even know existed. And that might be trying out a new camera that comes out before anyone else gets to and or uh, reviewing other gear or being invited to a seminar or a photo show or even just landing a lot more end user clients than uh, you would have ever thought might be possible. And they might even be uh, clients, you know, away from your area, just kind of where this social media marketing handles itself in a way where you, once you just put it out there and people find it, and if you're creating the, uh, the correct content that connects with people, um, I just feel like these things will open and when you're not putting it out there, there's no chance for it to uh, happen for you. So I feel like you ask any of these photographers that have started sharing that type of content on their social feeds, I, I doubt any of them are going to say anything negative about it. And it's kind of like what I've built here on YouTube. This has opened up a lot of opportunities that I never would have guessed it would have opened. And uh, I couldn't be happier, and I kind of wish I'd started doing this a lot lot sooner. But I guess, you know, it's hindsight is twenty twenty, and we just got to keep on trucking. Uh, but so what I thought I would do, too, in this video is show the tools that I use to record my behind the scenes in case some of y'all are interested in doing uh, doing that. Uh, which, as I just laid out here, I feel like is very important. Okay, with all that out of the way, I thought I would just try to quickly show uh, four cameras, four tools that I use to capture my behind the scenes. We're not going to go into great depth uh, or like any kind of official reviews on these. You can easily find reviews out there uh, on YouTube, and I don't want to take up all your time here talking about uh, stuff that you, know, you can find easily, and this video will be stretched out to like an hour or so. Uh, with that in mind, I do want to say that uh, each one of these uh, is a solid option for more than just recording behind the scenes, and uh, you can do a deep dive on, on these cameras and quickly see that they are powerful tools and can be used in, in many different scenarios. And that's really the main reason I would include them on this list in general. So let's start with the, uh, the most obvious. The first one would be, and I'm actually using it as a monitor here, uh, your phone. And just like Brad mentioned, uh, in the video, my last video, when we, we talked about this type of thing. The phone is a super simple way to capture your behind the scenes. Uh, he likes to hand it to someone that's on set, doesn't matter really who. And I think that's a good thing about the phone and the fact that we all basically have a phone these days and most of us uh, have used the camera on the phone. And so the, there's no real learning curve there. And, and like he says, he instructs whoever's there to kind of just capture what's going on and, and then he will kind of move to the camera and then show the, the final results and that type of type of thing. So that makes it super simple, super easy. You've already got it with you. Uh, I, I would say maybe the, the, the downside of using your phone is it's still a phone, you can get calls. I'm in a bit of a different situation on a lot of my shoots where it's more of a commercial kind of thing and I can't 
I'm not really there to <laughs> film my behind the scenes. If I'm catching behind the scenes, it's, it's done in more of a discreet manner. And so I'm not going to really hand my phone to uh, someone to record that and draw a lot of attention to what's going on, depending on w what the shoot is. Uh, but that is probably 50% of the time is, is not an option for what I'm doing. And so there's some other options uh, that are a little more low key. And the first one that I want to show is the uh, Insta360. And this is the uh, X3 model. Uh, this is the third generation. They've, they've come a long way with these cameras. This is a simple camera where I just will attach it uh, to their Insta360 kind of extension stick here, which the camera erases uh, automatically when it's recording. So I will just screw this in here and then I've got some tripod feet that I put on the other end and I can just set this anywhere on my set, not say a word and just hit the button to start recording and uh, go about my shoot. And what this does is records obviously in a 360 manner. And then in post, you will, you will move the camera, you do your camera movements in post with their software, which is very intuitive, very easy to use. You can use an app on your phone to, to create clips and you can, or you can bring it into like Premiere and editing software and it has a standalone desktop software where you can make the camera moves. Uh, and this uh, camera too, you can use it for a lot of different things. Um, if you just wanna catch, you know, just in general fun uh, movies uh, with this camera, it's, it's fantastic for that. And it's, it's, for what you're getting here, I don't feel like it's all that expensive. So uh, this is option number one. I, I have this with me on every photo shoot and we'll do my best to uh, stick it out there. And you, you've seen this plenty of times in these behind the scenes clips uh, here on my channel. So the Insta360 X3 for the first one. Second one is a newer uh, camera. And this is the Pocket Osmo 3. And this is the creator's kit that uh, you can get with it, which I would go ahead and probably recommend to, to pick that up. Uh, it comes with this little holder. You've got, for those of you who haven't seen this, it's all over YouTube. It's a, a gimbal style camera. So this thing gives you a lot of different options uh, in this creator kit. You also get like a battery grip. You get these tripod uh, feet here that will uh, screw into the bottom of this grip here. And so very similarly to the 360 camera, I will just kind of set this up. This does bring a little bit more of attention, um, especially depending on where you place it, but you can just kind of place this down. You can set this to track uh, in like either yourself or maybe the talent from your camera, or you can turn the tracking off and just have it as a static small camera. And it's got a little screen here so you can see what's going on. You also can frame it up on the app on your phone if you want to go that route. Once again, I'm usually trying to be uh, discreet so I will just kind of turn this on. And if there's a table, usually my tether table, I might stick this kind of on the edge and let it do, let it do its thing. Or I'll stick it on the ground maybe next to me, uh, that type of thing. Another thing, let me just real quick, with this placement on this, Another drawback is since it's recording 360, you do have some um, options to zoom in and zoom out especially, but zooming in uh, is kind of dependent on the resolution. But you can, what I like to do is, is when I'm recording, I'll try to place this between me and the computer if possible so then I can make my camera movements from me over to, over to the computer and show the results on the computer. Uh, so that's back to that 360 there. Uh, this you would probably have to pick it up and do it by hand unless it was tracking me. And then if I walked over to the computer uh, during the shoot, then it would pan obviously with me. Uh, but it, this is actually fairly simple too, where you could probably uh, get away with, you know, handing it to somebody on set, doing the same thing with the phone. It's pretty intuitive when you, when you rotate it, uh, the camera will come around and, and catch what's in front of the gimbal or in front of the camera and where you're pointing it uh, fairly uh, intuitively. So seems to be the word of the day. Uh, also with this one, if you want to record uh, audio, any kind of dialogue, what's going on in the set, just make sure you don't have any copyright music, um, potential issues that might be going on uh, during your photo shoots. But you can uh, sync this up to the camera here. You can put this on if you want to show a little bit more about maybe your coaching or talking to the talent or relating things during a photo shoot. Uh, this is a great option, a big step up from the 360 there. Uh, and it's a camera, so you're not having to worry about a, a phone call coming in if you're trying to use your phone for the same type thing. So 
the Pocket Osmo 3, uh, fantastic camera. I use this a good bit during that uh, volleyball uh, media day video that I put out a couple weeks ago. This was a um, big component of that um, to capture the behind the scenes content for that video. So let's move from the smaller ones to something a little more substantial. And this is the Sony ZV-E1 full frame camera. Uh, just a, a true monster. It's got the same sensor in it as the Sony A7S III and the FX3. So you are stepping up in, qua in quality a good bit. I mean, I will say the quality coming out of this guy is, is really strong as well. Uh, but this, um, this gives you more options too if you uh, want to be more serious about the, the content you're capturing. Possibly if you're on a set where you need to capture video as well as stills, uh, and you're like me and you don't like to use the same camera to do both, uh, this gives you that option. Um, you know, the only drawback I would say is maybe the form factor where a um, potential client might be a little wary of such a small camera uh, <laughs> producing the content, the video content that they're wa wanting at the end of the day. But uh, we all know that this camera right here will, will do pretty much anything you need it to do. Uh, it's just that kind of perception type thing where you, you might be a little more impressive with a bigger camera to do that. Uh, but if you, you know, if that's not a concern, this is definitely a great option. I like to pair it up uh, with the 16 to 35 f4 um, power zoom lens. Uh, it's a great little compact. You can obviously get probably a smaller prime on here if you wanted to um, bring the form factor down a little bit. Uh, but a, I was actually recording my YouTube videos up until this one, probably the last uh, eight, 10 videos I was uh, filming with this camera. I switched over just for simplicity sake and was perfect for what I was doing or what I'm doing here for uh, YouTube. And uh, I like to pair it up uh, with this uh, PY, it's PGY Tech. Uh, one of the harder names to say in our business, I think, for uh, gear suppliers. I've got their, one of their bags over here that I use a good bit, but the PGY Tech uh, Manis Pod. And this is a great little compact tripod. You can uh, do all kinds of different little things with it. You got an Arca Swiss um, ball head on top. And once again, if I wanted to, I could set this up uh, off to the side and record during the shoots. I, if I'm being honest, I'm doing that more with these cameras here. And then if I want to do more of a serious kind of talking head type uh, shot, uh, maybe afterwards, uh, that's where then I would probably use this um, based off of whatever the shoot is. But I will say probably overall right now, this, this guy here, the Pocket Osmo 3, kind of gives uh, the best of both worlds of, of what's going on, uh, you know, in, in relation to capturing behind the scenes type content and then taking it a couple steps further. So... Uh, this is kind of what, I, what I've been using, the phone 360 camera, Osmo uh, 3, and then the uh, Sony ZV-E1. As I mentioned from the onset, these are all super strong tools that you can use in a lot of different applications rather than just capturing behind the scenes. So I want to come on here, just show you all my tools, talk about what I feel, why I feel like it's important to do that, uh, especially after I had an interview video with, with Brad uh, previously and just looking at it everything that's opened up for him based on basically his social media content and sharing his behind the scenes. And like, like he said, he does it straight with the phone. I'm using other tools, but whatever you can do to get it done, I would suggest strongly to start doing it if you're not already. So if you feel like this video is worthy, please give it that thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button down there if you wanna see more content just like this and the little bell to give you a notica notification when I'm back on here on YouTube. In the meantime, y'all can find me on social media at Quants Photo on Instagram and Prolight Mods on Instagram as well. Whew, trying to struggle to get through this video. And y'all stay safe and healthy out there. Hopefully this pollen's gone soon and I will see y'all in the next one.